So what's going on today, people, is we're getting new tile in the uh, master bedroom here. I am going to do like a quick walkthrough just to kind of explain the basic theory behind tile. The first thing you want to do is get all your materials. Estimate your tile. The way you do that is measure the room length times width. That'll give you the square footage. And you want an overage of 10%. So for example, if it's 150 square feet you have to do, you would need 15 square feet extra because you are going to be cutting tile as you go around the edge of the room. And there is going to be a little bit of waste, so you want to account for that waste. So I've bought my tile. Calculator tells you on the bag, based on uh, what size trowel you're going to use, how big the notch is, how much square footage coverage you'll get out of that. So get your bags of that, and also your grout. On the floor, I always use a sanded grout. I've got that over here. So you've got all your materials, you've got your tools, you're going to need a trowel. I'll show you what that's for later. But the first thing you do before you start laying any tile down is lay your grid pattern out on the floor. And the way you do that is you measure each wall from one side to the other side and then mark exactly where the middle is. Do that on all four walls and then snap a chalk line from one side of the wall to the other just like that and then from the other side over here. If you're doing any sort of diamond pattern, you want to mark off your diagonals as well. And the way I did this one was I just measured from the center along here, five feet, and then measured five feet out from there to there. Same thing over here, five feet from there, five feet, five feet, made an X there, so on and so forth. Five feet isn't a guideline on how to do it, I just used five feet because that was a good distance that would give me almost from here to the edge of the wall chalk line. So get your chalk lines all done and then mix up some mortar based off what it says on the bag. The way you want to do that is uh, I always start with a little bit of water in the bucket. I use a paint mixer with a drill, pour in a little bit of um, the mortar here, mix that up. It's gonna be really thin at first. Keep adding mortar, keep mixing it, adding mortar, mixing it. It's easier if you have one of those big high torque paddle mixers, but I don't have one of those, so I've gotta do it that way. So mix up some mortar, get in about the consistency of peanut butter, and then grab your trowel and start laying down tile. I'll show you how that's done in just a moment. So you've got your mortar all mixed up, you've got your grid lines laid down, you've got your pattern ready to roll. Uh, next thing you're ready to do is start putting down some tile. I would recommend wearing gloves even though I don't have any. My wife used uh, the last of my latex gloves to dye her hair. <laughs> so I don't have any of those. I do recommend some really good quality knee pads because you're going to be on your knees for most of the day doing this. And I'm actually going to lay down a herringbone pattern. So I'm going to use a square to ensure that I'm laying these tiles down just square. So there's two different ways to put the tile down to the ground. You can either put the mortar on the ground first, or you can do what's called back buttering, which is putting the mortar on the tile and then laying the tile in place. I like to just get as much mortar down on the floor as I can, work it, but I also lay tile down really quickly. So, um, you may want to just kind of look at where you're going to set your tile down, which I'm going to start right here. And then put a little bit right there where you're at. And then add more as you go along. But like I said, I like to put a nice blob of it on there and get it going. So here's what we do. Scrap the over. Push it down on the pavement, use the flat side to kind of push it down where you want it. You want it to get good adhesion to the floor. Just kind of stick it down like this. Thin it out, spread it out. And once you've got it down like that, where, where are you going to want it? Come back with your notch side and put notches in it.
Now what you're looking for with the notches is make sure that you've got good stand up. It's not wanting to, uh, like it's, you don't want to make sure it's not too thin where it starts to fall down and all that. And what you want is good adhesion when you put your tile down because you don't want any air spots or any voids underneath the tile after you put it down. And if you've ever walked on a tile that has any voids underneath it, you know just what I'm talking about. If you're walking across it and it sounds really hollow, that's not what you're looking for. So there you go, you've got your first tile in place. The next thing to do is put your second tile into position. Um, this being a herringbone pattern, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, I'm actually going to go this way. So you see I have some overlay here. I'm just going to clean that up a little. Put that back in. Because that's going to start to dry on the floor. And you don't want that to happen. So there we go. Like I said, I'm going this way with it, so I'm going to add more. Following my grid lines, making sure I stay right in with those. I'm going to put the next few tiles in place, then show you what I've got. 